in the interest of time, I'm going to scoot us straight into my beautiful dear friend, Natasha. We met how long ago now? Uh, almost two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Almost two years ago in Los Angeles, California. We both... No, Jamaica. No, sweetheart, I wasn't in Jamaica. Oh. This is a different Natasha. I met Brent. No, I met Brent in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. So anyways, we met um, because we were chosen one of the 40 people around the world to represent Mind Valley and create communities of Mind Valley live. And um, we noticed that we had so many similarities, although we were from different ends of the world. I'm from Canada, she's from Australia, but something jived. And so while I work a lot with leaders, whether they be entrepreneurs or top executives in various companies around the world, I focus a lot on flow states with meditation, with holistic balance, um, and then also incorporating you know, 5,000 year old Vedic philosophies for visionaries and leaders without telling them that I'm doing so because they're gonna be like, ooh, is that a cult? Like, what's going on? So I don't teach them meditation, I teach them mental fitness focus training because it's gonna help them with their internal profitability and their external profitability, right? So it's I'm a real you this. I, She doesn't need me, I'm out. Okay, so um, <laughs> when Jade called me and said, hey, let's run a you know, Global Leaders Mastermind, I said, great, because I love working with leaders, meaning people who have a mission and a passion and purpose, and they're willing to go all out. Um, to make that come to life. So whether that be entrepreneurs, and then when you think about executives, you're like, but why executives? Like, they're so structured in a box and so on. So I'll take you back a second, and I might just talk for 10 minutes. Like, I really, she said, no structure, no structure today. Okay, so I um, started in the corporate world when I was about 20, and it lasted about f long four hard years of just doing my time in what felt like jail. Um, but the good thing that came about it was that I was able to take on and understand the importance of systems and structures as a lot of the time as creative entrepreneurs as we are, we get caught up into the flow of things or in the creativity of things and we get in like all unicorn world and we're like, wait a second. Why am I not scaling? Why am I not going forward? And it's because we fail sometimes to actually incorporate some systems and structures in what we're doing. So I did that. Then I ended up leaving and I ran, uh, ended up starting a few or multiple businesses uh, in Toronto, Canada, where I'm from, mainly focused on executive health and well-being. And in that time, I, I was, I guess I, you'd say you'd call me a recovering perfectionist right now. Like how many of you guys are perfectionists? right? We're entrepreneurs. That's what we do. We're really hard on ourselves. And so everything I had to do had to be perfect. I'm 40 years old now, but I, I thought I had to have everything accomplished by 30 years old. Like I had to write my book. I had to start three businesses. I had to fly around the world numerous times. I had to just do, 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 because at age 30, I was going to fall in a hole or something. Like the world was going to open up and boom, it was going to collapse and there was going to be nothing. You know, and I had to write two bucks in that time. Everything had to be done, and I realized I was chasing time. Like, I was, I, was, I was almost like, you know that feeling when you're just going, and you're going, and you're going, and you're trying to keep up? How many of you guys been there before? Yeah. And then you t we fail to take a step back and be like, are we really in flow at that point? Or are we living in comparison mode? or just trying to keep up mode. And then we're like, but I did my yoga this morning. I ran there, I got it done, checked it off the box. And you're like, wait a second, is that really getting me into flow in my ultimate state of optimal well-being, of health, of taking a step out of myself because we live in this world of selfies, self-improvement, self-development, me, 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 me. We're a pretty selfish world right now. And if we could actually take a step back and understand why did we go into the business in the first place, can we flip it from me, 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 me into empathy? And then take a step back, slow down for a moment and say, okay, wait, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like really, you may have decided you wanted to go into a certain business because you were passionate about it and you thought it was wonderful and there was a purpose behind it and then you forgot to stop for a second and recheck in. And a lot of the times is we don't want to recheck in. We want to shove it under the carpet because we declared to the world that I'm an entrepreneur and this is what I'm going to do. But after a couple of years, if you're not really enjoying it, what's the shame in being like, wait a second, I'm going to switch paths. So I'm going somewhere with this because I wasn't able to switch paths. I would, but I would just keep adding on more businesses as opposed to being like, all right, this isn't working anymore. Close it up, shut her down, move on. I wouldn't. 
I would just keep adding on and piling on because I was afraid of imperfection and I was afraid of removing my, va my mask and showing my, my vulnerability, which is very, very new to me. And the ironic part is, is that I actually train global leaders, like some top CEOs and work some pretty amazing people around the world. You know, Robin Sharma, Bill Gates, and um, Paul Allen, and Vishen Lakhiani, like Nelson Mandela I had lunch with when I was 10. And so for me, I was like, but that's what I need to be. And, if, and surely they're perfect. Surely they never stumbled, and surely they're living this state of balance all the time, but I invite you to consider this. Is there a linear approach to balance or flow? Right? Is it something that we're trying to achieve and get to, get to, get to? I, I reached flow. Awesome. Is it sustainable? I don't truly think it is, because if you think about balance or flow, if you think about life, if it's this linear line like this, what does that mean? When we're in the hospital and all of a sudden your lifeline goes beep, are we alive or dead? Right? So similarly with life, if we think about life, and especially in the entrepreneurial battle or journey or the hero's journey that we are, how many times we're like, yes, this is awesome. Oh my God, I'm almost bankrupt. Yes, even better. Oh my God, I bet this was, and we're constantly like this, like we're bipolar. Yes, yes, how many? Yes, yes, awesome, yeah, it's true. So how about we flip it in our minds for a moment and be like, hey, wait, do I actually have to be struggling? Like, first of all, let's take a deep breath because I saw someone take a deep breath. That resonated, didn't it? Okay, everybody just take a deep breath, ready? I'm gonna inhale for five, four, belly rise, three, two, one, and let it out. We're going to do that two more times. I'm going to tell you why. Because I get really fast when I talk, and then I stop. And then you guys have a lot of thoughts that are going through your mind right now. And it's like trailing like this, and everyone's shoulders started moving up into their ears, and everyone's breathing started going into their chests. And what happens when we breathe into our chests? It's synonymous to when something crazy comes up in life, and we're like... <gasps> Does that make sense? So let's do it again. We're gonna inhale. I have five minutes break, got it. We're gonna inhale slowly, okay? So we're gonna inhale and we're gonna make sure our bellies rise up. And then we're gonna exhale it all out like as loud as you want, like ah! Make a face, stick your tongue out, right? Life doesn't have to be so serious. And when it comes to us building and striving, and getting to the next level or scaling, scaling our businesses, what I would love for you to take away from this is breathe as loud as you want, be as silly as you want, because adopting a level of playful prosperity is going to bring you back to why you're doing and serving the world the way you set out to do. Because entrepreneurship is not all about power and profitability. It should be the balance of power, profitability, passion, and purpose. And within that, if you can implement self-love, and serving love throughout that journey. So we've decided that the balance and the flow isn't that line, it's actually the journey. It's like a flow, right? It's like the ocean. You have a choice of either resisting the ups and downs and like fighting it, or you have a choice of dancing with the flow. So the same thing goes with your entrepreneurial journey. I invite you to consider this. Pa power profitability, sure. And you can actually decide what power means to you. It could be an empowered way of looking at things. Am I empowering myself throughout the journey? Am I empowering others around me? Am I making a larger impact and legacy in the world? There's your power. Profitability, yes, obviously we're in business. We, get, we got numbers. We need to make some money, otherwise it's just a hobby. And then add in the passion and purpose and revisit it. Don't be afraid to remove your mask. I mean, I cried in front of our mastermind team the very first night. I like burst out crying. The first time I talked in front of a Mind Valley group, it was about a thousand people, and they were introducing me, and they're like, "Yeah, Natasha teaches high-performing executives and entrepreneurs around the world on the passion, on the power of, of imperfection and vulnerability." And I got up there, I was like, "Hi, I haven't held a microphone in two years," and I started bawling. And because I removed that mask, it was allowing other people to remove their mask as well. So. 
Taking away from this free-flowing talk, I would love you to consider to take a check back in. Do not feel guilty about stopping for a second. I burnt out the end of last year. December 13th, I launched a brand new part of my business called the Global Changemaker Series, where we're creating the next generation of Nelson Mandela's, Mother Teresa's, Martin Luther King's, Mahatma Gandhi's. The day after, I burnt out. Brain fog, couldn't think, went to Costa Rica, thought I'd be good for a month. I slept for three and a half weeks, thinking I'd be okay, and I wasn't. Burnout's fucking real. And if we don't take care of ourselves and understand that our state of flow is not sustainable, it's not something you're just gonna rush to and get there and then it's done. So if there's any health and well-being part of this talk is that A, set your boundaries. Learn to say no. Because there's gonna be so many, so many, so many things out there that are gonna attract you like, Entrepreneur, yes, I want to do this. And you've got that golden carrot or that transparent carrot that's hanging there all the time. You're like, maybe I should go there. But if you don't say no, mark my words, you're going to burn out. And it takes a long time to get to burnout and it takes even longer to get out of it. So set your boundaries. Number two, don't feel guilty about taking some time off and set, taking a step back. Okay? Third thing, remove your mask once in a while. Remove your mask. And it's going to be the hardest thing you do because you will have built up what you've done for so long and you're going to think, oh my God, are they going to think I'm credible or not? If I show my true colors and I remove my mask and I tell people, I had to file for bankruptcy one day, I could never say that before. The 2008 economic crisis hit and I had to file for bankruptcy. It wasn't my fault, but I could never say that before. So now removing the mask has allowed me to breathe it's allowed me to embrace my imperfections. I'm still alive. I've built three businesses since. It's been great. But I also know there's a downfall. So embrace those times. Don't be afraid. And surround yourself by people who are going to accept you, even in your lowest points. Yeah? Cool. I think I'm done. Thank you, Natasha. Yeah. So keep the, keep the mic. We, we still have Q&A. So I'm going to start the ball rolling because I know you so well. I, yeah, you do. So give us, what would be your number one tip? Because I know that you came out of flow and hit funk. Totally. So, I'm in a funk right now, guys, actually. So what, what do you, what's your, okay, what's your top tip to yourself to get you back to flow state? What's the number one thing that you need to do starting tomorrow? Love myself even when I'm in my lowest state because I realized is that I was my own biggest enemy. I wasn't loving myself in this moment. And when we're in our lowest funk and we're not showing up perfect, the way that society expects us to or our clients expect us to or our partnerships expect us to, that's when you need to love yourself the most. Totally. Does anyone have a hard time with self-love? <laughs> like double hands up, leg up. <laughs> Seriously, that, that would be one of the main ones. Yeah, and I think knowing you, mm -hmm. and guys, think about your questions because I've got a mic and I'll, I'll run with them in a second. It's a matter of loving yourself enough to give yourself permission to stop because you think, this is my observation on her, and, and tell me if it resonates with any of, you, any of you. You think maybe you're not enough, and so you think that if you just fucking do more, mm then you'll be enough. If I just work a little bit harder, grind a little harder, do more than everyone else, like just get this extra post out, do this extra thing. But if you actually stopped and loved yourself enough, you'd realize that the best thing you could do is to take time. Yes, agreed. And also, I mean, I'm a big social impact person. I love making social impact. I love giving. I'm a big giver and it's been a huge learning for me to learn how to receive. So not only am I trying to receive love with myself, I'm trying to receive from others. And it's really difficult for me to do that. So if you can even watch your words, like it could be anyone who says, hey, I wanna gift you this, or hey, I can do this for you. You're like, no, 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 I got it. And you could just be like, actually, be my guest, I'm just gonna observe. And it kind of, it's, it's hard. It is, it's really hard, and so this is a huge, Transition time for me this year, and I thought I could do it in a month when I slept in Costa Rica for three and a half weeks. And no, and now I am here in Bali, and literally my quarter one of my business 
profitability was like zero because, well, in terms of productivity for me, because I need this. My doctors told me, my naturopath told me, you have two choices. You either take six months off entirely, close up your laptop and your computer and your phone, and don't do anything, like nothing, which would drive probably everyone here insane, because we're high performers, we're creatives. They're like, no, 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 no. Or the second choice was, you slow down, because I did 17 countries last year, speaking on stages, running events like this, all sorts of things, thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. I think one of our friends might have told you about a year ago that you needed to stop, right? It was about last year at this time in March. I had already done about seven of those 17 countries. Can I have a show of hands? Has anyone got someone in their life telling them that they might need to slow down right now? One person. Uh, anyone oh, else? Two. Only two. All have the rest you, of you are good. How about someone else? Wow. I think, about, I think some people might need to be a little bit more honest with themselves or get more friends. Um, or have you, to, have you had the internal conversation with yourself ever? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've slowed down a lot. Yeah, look at the smile on this lady. That was awesome. Ah. Was like, she's like lounging wow. right now. It feels amazing. And, you, and knowing you guys, you, you've been in flow. Like you've run these monster events, but you know that if you don't take the slow down, those events will kill you. Like how many people did you have at your last one? 500 people. Yeah. Yeah. So too often, like so many of us, and Hershey, who's at the back, we used to eat... Gary V for breakfast and think that that's the lifestyle, like hustle is the new black, wear sleep deprivation as a badge of honor and grind, grind, grind. But hopefully more of us here are a bit more awake and realize that we need to have that downtime, that recharge to allow us to be able to like live in flow state, to live in peak performance and optimization. And we can't and, live up there all of the time. And also adopting things like possibility-mindedness. So I teach a lot on something, a concept that we call infinity thinking. So we get so mm, in our flow of how things are working. And we just like, okay, I could call a strategist and maybe I can scale or maybe I can hire new people or maybe I can this and that. But what about if we were to say, okay, 90% of the people in the world think one-dimensionally, right? So I'll give you an example. Like, somebody I, hurt me. What I got you. Right? So like one dimensionally, what, what comes at me is what life is. Somebody hurt me, what a jerk. What was me? Why is this happening to me? Why, why is my business working out? Why are my employees doing this? Why didn't I get the lease on the place that I wanted to start? Why, why me, 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 I'm such a victim. Right? But that's how 90% of the people think. And then if we were to elevate our mindset up here for a second and say, okay, wait a second. Somebody hurt me, what a jerk. Okay? What well, also came at me like this. Well, perhaps I did something to contribute to that. Right, so now we're taking on personal responsibility. Well, maybe something happened to that person five or 10 minutes ago and it has absolutely nothing to do with me. Okay, so that's empathy and compassion to what they're going through and you removed yourself from it. Or maybe that person was just brought up that way and educated or reared that way or culturally that's who they are and that's their reality. And now you've adopted the idea of diversity. Right? And that's now, you've gone from this victim mentality, and you can translate this to anything in your life and your business. Right? So you've gone from the victim mentality, and you've just elevated to multidimensional thinking. Right? Where you've taken on four other possibilities as to why somebody hurt me, what a jerk. Now think about, there'll be infinite other reasons why it came at me like this, because it also came at me here, and here, and here, and here. But if I'm in this tunnel vision, focusing just here, and I'm not getting out of the ground and looking up and around me and turning around and being like, oh God, it came at me here, here, and here, and here. When you start practicing that, and a lot of it comes with meditative practice, when you start practicing that, you start removing the fascia and the scar tissue that's surrounding our brain and our hearts that builds up over time and over time and over time. So I invite you to consider that possibility-mindedness. We call it infinity thinking. So when any time something comes at you, whether it be in business or in your love life or in your personal life or your family, the first reaction is to react. So take a step back, observe, and be like, how can I elevate this and think possibility-minded? Beautiful. Thank yeah. you.
Has anyone got any questions for Natasha? And these are all, yeah, I got it. No yeah. questions are off limits with the speakers. They've been briefed that it is a no holds barred and it doesn't necessarily need to be about flow. It can be about anything because it's how we get to flow status if we're moving all the other shit. Yeah, hello, my name is Sylvia. Thanks, and Sylvia. I have uh, kind of the opposite situation. I've always been good at slowing down and being conscious about how I, when I am too busy and immediately do something against it. But I feel like it's uh, keeping me from really initiating like really projects that I feel that are big or events that are big because I have the feeling this will take so much work and always the ideas that I have, I postpone them and postpone them in the future uh, because I have the feeling this would lead to a burnout and better not start with something like this. And how would I then scale up? Right, so I think what comes down to that, and I think a lot of us have that, right? We have so many ideas, so many ideas. Where am I going to fit it in? It doesn't have to fit in this year, yeah. right? So remember that whole, like, there's that whole FOMO, fear of missing out and trying to accomplish everything now, 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 otherwise the hole's going to open up and you're going to fall in. Like, what happens in that state is that you're actually living too much in the future and you forget about living in the present. So how about you could prioritize certain things and say, you know what, in this year, I want to accomplish this. In three years, I want to accomplish this. In five years, this. Once you start doing that, and what I would suggest you do is actually start with your big vision first. So work backwards. So like really tap into your five senses. What do I see? What do I hear? What do I taste? What do I smell? And how do I feel? energetically, emotionally, spiritually, in my grand master plan vision of my life. Draw it out, be free, do whatever you do, sketch it, anything. And then from there, go down to 10 years. And you just give yourself, I want to accomplish this for my health in 10 years, this in my personal life, and this in my maybe financial life in 10 years. And then work backwards and go five years because if you don't know what you want in your grand master plan, and you don't know what you want in 10 years, you're gonna be scrambling today, tomorrow, first quarter, next quarter, because it's just, you're not leading to anything. So take time to say it doesn't need to be now. You could just pocket it for year seven. So to if I understand you correctly, if I would have some big idea and I can imagine it is doable in three years without getting crazy in, in the yes. organization, to start doing my little, little steps, but planning it in the future, not like it has to be this year, okay. Sure, like it could be even outreaching to certain people and planting a seed for them, mm -hmm. knowing okay. that you've got something that you wanna create two years from now, mm -hmm. right? So as long as you've got that vision going, then you can work backwards. Did okay. I answer your question? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. One back there, yeah. Um, that was that was wonderful. Um, you mentioned that Thanks. you're currently in like transition in the, in this kind of liminal space, and that resonates with me too. Do you mind if I ask you to slow down a little bit, only because you've got a beautiful accent? So I'm trying to just like get <laughs> it all in. Okay, so you're in this in this state of transition and in this this liminal space. Um, how do you go about thinking about how you structure that? And maybe there is no structure, and what aspects of that go, go, go mentality have you had to almost like surrender or let go of in order to embrace this, I guess, more exploration as opposed to like climbing the mountain? It's more like finding the right mountain to climb. And what, what does that look like for you? Uh, it looks like surrounding myself with the people that matter, number one. So the people who are gonna give me the hard conversations, give me the tough love I need, and still love me and support me. Um, so that's number one. Number two is trying to tell myself every morning not to live in guilt. Like, where do I get off being in Bali for a month right now? I'm supposed to be burnt out and working on the burnout. Right, working on the burnout, but this is that. Right, I don't know what's gonna happen with my business they cut me off, no. Um, because I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't, I've never taken this much time out without that plan, so I think, is there a structure to it? The structure pretty much is get back into the routine of anything that makes me feel good right now. Mm. Whatever makes me feel good right now, I love speaking in front of people, even if it's not planned. Somehow, even though I'm in my funk, and I feel like I'm going through a depression, this is where I feel in flow. 
So if I can find a way to do this as much as possible and then figure it out when I have to, that's great. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to produce and have certain numbers met per quarter and certain this and da, da, da. If you're not alive, that's not gonna matter. And trust me, I felt dead at the end of 2018 and there was no reason to. I launched one of the biggest parts of my business ever, December 13th. I have a ton of people are looking to invest in it and take it globally. And I was like, I feel dead. I mean, then what's the point? How can you really serve the world if you're going to be taking your own health and your life away and your own mental sanity? So if you can work on emotional resilience tactics, that would be probably the best, the best advice I could give you. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Thank you.